What is up, loud and proud crowd? Hopefully you guys are doing absolutely fantastic today. Welcome back to the channel. <sighs> just walking around, just got back from taking part of the family on a trip to Tennessee. We had a good time, a lot of fun, a lot of fun, but I'm just coming back. It's been about a week since I've seen my, seen my babies and I'm enjoying life right now, you know what I mean? Just coming home, checking on the trucks, just looking at it, just loving every minute of it. You ever just like walk around and just go like, it is a good life, you know what I mean? That's how I'm feeling right now. And those of you who may be newer to the channel, maybe since my most previous video, which got a lot of love, you guys got the video, I think it's out of very close to 43,000 views in like three days. And you guys are loving this new Colorado Red first gen. I mean, it is just beautiful. And a lot of people are like, dude, I hope you know that that's repainted, it's not original. I didn't say the paint was original, I said it's flawless. I said it's a flawless truck, I didn't say it wasn't repainted, but it is original color. They took the original Colorado red paint coat and that's what they did on this. They didn't, you know, do anything else crazy. But we got some work cut out for us now. We've got to put some door clips in, some stuff like, you know, just some just some small stuff you just got to do. And these are the types of clips that these doors take. Just weird finicky stuff. He said something about some kind of cardboard retainer for the um for the uh door locks and stuff. Kind of clip on, but Man, I just, I love this thing. I mean, it's just good. The doors aren't saggy, you know what I mean? Like, just, it's just a nice truck, dudes. I mean, it's just so nice. I love it. And this truck, it's just awesome too. And those of you who are new, this is my dad's first gen, 80,000 original miles. Beautiful, this truck actually came out of, I believe, the east area direction of um, Columbus, Ohio. And this truck actually came out of the east side of Columbus, Ohio too. I don't know how we're we found these trucks in that location, but we've bought now a couple first gens out of that same area. And we don't have like some kind of secret sauce to finding these trucks. Like I've had so many questions asked, you know, where do you find these trucks? Dude, how do you get those trucks? How do you get a good deal? All this stuff, you know? And um, if we just, you just gotta be looking, you know what I'm saying? Like this truck, it was a blessing in disguise, you know, the way that we found this. My dad happened to be looking at a truck online, looked just like this, I already kind of went through the story. Kind of looked just like this, but it was different kind of paint tone, it was rusted around the cap corners and rockers, and it just when we got to it in person, it was just not that good of a deal. Like it was like 80 some hundred, like $8,800, and we was like, oh, that's a great deal, you know? We get there and it's all like rusted, holes in the frame, just, I was like, this truck's Swiss cheese, you know, on wheels, you know, like I, I don't want, I don't want, you know, so we get in the truck and I'm just like, there's gotta be another truck out there with a good, you know, with a good price on it. And then we found this one. I was like, um, tomorrow I'm gonna buy that truck. And it just got listed and I immediately went over there the next day and bought the truck. And so that's just kind of how it goes, you know? You gotta be looking a lot, cause this truck was listed for like 20 hours when I found it. You gotta be looking a lot. You gotta look for the right kinds of deals that you know you can get a good price on, stuff like that. Like this guy, he wanted like 12.5 for the truck a little while ago. I thought he wanted more than that for it at one point, but I know for sure when I saw it last, you want a 12.5 for it. A couple months later, relists it. I got there and I was just, I told him the situation and he told me his and I was like, he got, he was moving to Colorado or something. He's like, I can't take it with me. I gotta sell the thing. And I was like, then I'm your man. This is what I'll give you. And uh, that's the way it went down. So I got, I mean, for thousands less than he was previously asking. I mean, I got a good deal on this truck and it runs awesome. It runs awesome. By the way, on, the, on that note, a lot of you guys wanted to hear it running and it is a non-intercooled by the way it's not a huge deal you know um if the if these trucks are stock being non-intercooled is not a big deal obviously with an intercooler you can make more power you can get more air you can keep things cooler um, but if you're running at stock you know stock levels and stuff are very close to it's not a huge deal you know what i mean especially for this truck and and we're going to get into some details on that too also the one thing i also wanted to tell you about the atv giveaway i wasn't really telling anybody because i don't know how people feel about certain things. So I usually don't really tell people what I'm gonna end up doing with the money that I make for certain things. And what I did with the truck giveaway is I immediately took some of that money and I threw it into an ATV and then I also set another five grand aside for you know, a cash giveaway. So you guys can do either, pick either an ATV or $5,000 cash if you enter the giveaway, which by the way, we've had more people enter for a light bar giveaway than we have for this one right now. And, I, and I'm not kidding, I'm not just saying that. We've literally got like, we've had more entries on a $300 light bar than we have on you know, a $6,000 machine and $5,000 cash, you know what I mean? Like, it's kind of mind boggling right now. So I'm sitting there going, hmm, second guess in this giveaway, like, should I have done this? Cause people don't seem to really want to enter this. But um, regardless, whether I make money or lose money, it does not matter, somebody's gonna win something. So that's the way it's gonna be. What I was gonna say is, 
what I was going to do with the money that I did make, if I made anything on top, but if I do make money on top of it, my goal was to get my grandfather a truck, okay? And I also want to touch on that. A lot of people thought, oh, he talked about that truck looking just like his grandpa's. So he's going to give that truck to his grandfather. Um, I can't do that due to, I could, but I, I won't do that due to um, his hips and knees and shoulder, okay? He used to drive a manual way back. He doesn't really want to drive a manual anymore. It'll bother his knees and his hips and his shoulder and stuff. He just doesn't. In his older age, he doesn't want to drive a manual. Okay, so um, if I gave him this truck, he'd think it's cool, but then he'd be like, dang it, you know, now I gotta feel my joints hurting every day I drive the thing, you know what I mean? And so going to work and back wouldn't really be the nicest thing for him to drive, you know what I'm saying? So, um, but what I was on that topic, what I made from this giveaway, this ATV giveaway, I was gonna take the, you know, some of the profits off the top and try to get my grandfather a truck and kind of build it a little bit for him and surprise him with it. He has no idea. Um, but that's what I was going to do. That was my, my intentions with that. I, I should be open with you guys on that kind of stuff. So um, if I end up making some money on this giveaway, that's where it's going to go is trying to bless my grandfather with a truck. You know, he's been a role model to me, you know, just the way he is. You know what I mean? Just work ethic and just a good upright man. Just just a good image of like hardworking guy who spent his life, you know, valuing all the small things, you know what I mean, and understanding the value of life and all that stuff, and just been a great person to look up to. And years now, I've been like, man, I'd love to buy my grandpa a truck someday. I'd love to buy him a truck. I'd love to get him the truck that he wants, you know? And um, it's getting to that point where I'm like, okay, I'm getting closer and closer. I think I can do it soon, you know? So I'm trying to get a little bit, a little bit more situated to where I'm able to um, bless my grandfather with a truck, because his truck's on its last leg. It's got transmission issues. It's making weird engine noises. It's it's not good. So he needed a truck months ago. Like his truck's getting out, it's, it's pretty beat up. And his birthday's actually coming up in like a couple months. But I would just love to be able to do that for him and that's what I'm gonna try to do. If, the, if this giveaway goes well, I will do that. <laughs> First startup that you guys have heard on this truck and let, sorry let me get back into what we're actually going to try to do with this look at the view on this truck compared to this one from the rear freaking wide dually and then you got this little pizza cutter setup truck i'll kind of show you under the hood here needs a little engine degreaser i mean it's just dusty you know what i mean like look at all that dust uh, but once you engine degrease this spray it out clean it up throw a new exhaust on it i mean it's it's just nice, you know what I mean? It's just, it's just clean. It's really nice. Beautiful factory condition, non-intercooled, 1991, 12 hours. So what I was gonna say is, I don't really know if I really wanna do much power under the hood of that thing. And the reason for that is that truck is so factory good looking, and they redid it factory color too. They didn't jank with anything. I would love to keep it that way under the hood. And I know for a lot of guys, don't keep it factory, build it out. And I understand that for most trucks. But for a truck that's becoming a classic and holds its value so, so well, I just, I wouldn't want to do it to that truck. You know what I'm saying? Because I know that that truck, 10, 20 years from now, if it stays in good condition, we can get that frame all sanded and chassis savered, we can keep it and preserve it and keep it in good shape, that truck is going to be worth a lot of dough, especially if it's in stock condition under the hood. And now in terms of the body, I don't want to rip any moldings off. I'm going to leave them on there. They're factory and they look really good. They may have been taken off for paint job and then re-put back on because it looks really well done. The moldings are so tight on there and snug. Like there's no play in them, no like peeling up, like just perfect. The bumpers are in great shape. So in terms of the body, I don't want to do anything to it. I want to keep it clean the way it is. Interior, I'm just going to clean it up. I'm just going to make sure the door panels are in. Everything's redone nice but keep it original interior. I'm not gonna jank with stuff, you know, I'm not gonna do anything, maybe sound system, but that's it. Um, but I'm, I have the original factory head unit in there too that'll probably just keep with the truck, you know what I mean? I feel like it would do the truck an injustice because it is so, it's just so factory everywhere else, you know, like as soon as you throw a bunch of power at it, you, I mean, in all honesty, you depreciate the truck years down the road when it's actually considered a classic and guys are paying top dollar for those. It's just not gonna be, it's not gonna be original anymore. You know what I mean? It's gonna be way too far not original that it's just gonna, it's just gonna hurt the truck more than it's gonna help it. Especially when it comes to how good they run stock for so many hundreds of thousands of miles. On a 200,000 mile truck, I would hate to just throw tons of power at it and just mess with it, you know what I mean? And that's why even with this truck, we didn't wanna do more than about, I wanna say 50 horsepower increase, 50 to 75 horsepower increase with all the mods that we did on it. 
we just don't want to mess with it. You know what I mean? We want to keep it as close as we can to factory looking under the hood and factory power because we don't want to just, you know, brutalize the thing and then, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like, and then just completely trash the value of it, especially down the road. It's just not what we want to do. If it was a second gen, there's way more of those available. I mean, just slap full on Craigslist. You can buy second gens all day long, do some as much crap as you want to them. There's just tons of them available. The stuff that I will do to it, probably wheels and tires, and that's about it. So I know it seems it just sounds really boring, but I've got other projects I got to start working on, like the, the non-intercooled 91 two-wheel drive street truck. I want to get on that truck ASAP. I want to get working on that thing and do a lot of cool stuff with that because it's unknown mileage. Nobody knows how many miles it has on it. Nobody knows if it's been overhauled once, twice. Nobody knows. It's just a truck that I would do that with. I'll swap the transmission out. I'll do whatever with that truck because I don't care. I got it cheap. And if I throw a ton of power at it, if something blows up, I don't care. You know what I mean? Like, it's just a different situation. Truck looks like it's in rough shape. It's a two-wheel drive, unknown mileage. I don't really care about, you know, in terms of if something were to happen to that truck. It's not a truck that I'm going to cherish for long-term value and originality. Say It's a different situation. And now in terms of wheels and tires, that's something that I really need to figure out. Um, as you can see, I'm wearing some Anthem. A new Anthem hat they sent me. Just Anthem's a great company to work with. They go out of their way, don't say anything, and you just randomly, I'll go out there and I've got new hats, new shirts, I mean, just new stuff. And they just, they just send out, you know, like, you know what, you're part of our family, we wanna take care of you, we're gonna send you some new apparel. They just take care of you. I love that about a company that just wants to make sure you're taken care of. You know what I mean? Especially if, you know, you're somebody that's part of their team and, you know, you're sponsored by them. They just make sure you're taken care of. I love that, I love that, I love that. And they treat their customers the same way. Even if you're not sponsored by them, they take care of it, you know what I mean? Like if you contact them, they will help you out with what you need and get you taken care of. I'm probably gonna rock some Anthem wheels on this truck. Now they say that they have some stuff that's in the works that's gonna be released very soon. So I don't know what it's gonna look like, but that's probably what we're gonna try to put on this truck. Now I personally wanna go with something more chrome. I think it'd look really good on the red. Size of the wheel, not sure yet. Size of the tires, not sure yet. Lift kit and stuff like that going on it, probably not. I wanna keep the suspension stock in terms of ride height. I'm probably gonna replace the shocks and stuff because they're a little bit rusty under there. Um, and I think the shocks are the rustiest thing on the truck. I don't know why, they guess cheaper materials, cheaper, cheaper metals. In terms of the stance and the height, I don't know. The rim size, I don't know. So kind of on debate. Let me know down in the comments below, what do you guys wanna see in terms of rims on those thing? Do you wanna go 20? Would you guys go 18? Do it, I mean, what do you guys wanna do? You know what I mean? Um, or if you guys are interested, go down to Anthem's website, check out their website, scroll through and let me know what Anthem wheel you would like to see on this truck if you, it was your truck and if it was your pick. So let me know down in the comments below. Big Red is what we named it, it's Big Red. Give her a start up. The audio might be a little bit bad compared to what it normally is because I had to take off my mic to set my camera up here on the dash with my Gorillapod thing um, to kind of mount it to the dash. Uh, but I also don't have my GoPro, so that's why I can't use my GoPro. Well, I do have a GoPro, but for whatever reason, it's not wanting to work right now. So trying to make do with what I got. Now this is just kind of be a going to be a little bit of drive, I guess, and just kind of sound in the cab and shifting through some gears, even though you can't see the shifter. That's kind of the downside of not having the GoPro working right now. But let's go. She sounds good. She sounds real good. a little bit. My other first gen hardly smokes. This one smokes a little bit. Nothing like my dually or the nasty red, but it, it does give a little pop. If you get on it. I love driving this five-speed. I don't know why. This one's even more fun to drive than my dually. I mean, my dually's a lot faster, but this is just a lot of fun. RPM gauges in this one though, so it's all just, I mean, just like, I guess driving any other ant manual, you just kind of drive by sound of the engine revving. So nice.
That is gonna wrap up the video for today on this truck. Just kind of wanted to get your guys' opinion on wheels for this. What do you guys think we should get? Go to Anthem's website, comment down below what style of Anthem wheel you guys think we should put on this. There's also some new stuff coming up real soon that they told me about. They haven't showed me though, or what it's gonna look like, or the styling, but new stuff coming out. They said they'd love to reveal to me as soon as it comes out. Maybe set us up with some wheels on this truck. Also, man, don't forget, we still have the dually here, man. We still got the dually. There's still some things like I'd like to do on this truck. I'd like to do the clutch, put the light bar in the bumper. Um, just a few other small things I'd like to kind of wrap up on this just to kind of finalize it. I'd actually love to do compounds on this at some point. I don't know when or timing on that, but I'd love to do that. Make it a real farm truck, a real gooseneck pulling machine. So, yeah. That's a wrap on this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that and you enjoyed the little drive. I'm really excited for this truck. It's gonna be very simple. We're not gonna do a lot of stuff to it, but it's gonna be a really cool truck just to have around. And we're gonna do some fun stuff with it, but we're not gonna, we're not gonna trash it. We're gonna really baby this one. Um, it's just too nice. It's the cleanest version we have. It's just way, way, way too nice to do anything crazy with it. But that doesn't mean we're not gonna do some crazy stuff with the other non-intercooled first gen, which is gonna have a lot of stuff done to it. So stay tuned for that. We're still gonna get some first gen content, some cool stuff. We're not just gonna do it with this truck though. So anyways guys, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, smash that thumbs up. Leave your comments down below. Let us know how excited you are about this truck and the builds on the other stuff coming up. And thank you guys so much for all the love and the support. Don't forget to enter the ATV giveaway. Help support the channel, helps really push things forward, it really gets things moving, and I really appreciate that, guys. Like I said, I've been blessed with a lot of nice things, and I'd love to bless you guys with some nice things in return for your support over the past several, several months. So thank you guys so much. Join the team, join the family, subscribe if you are new, and I will catch you guys in the next video. Peace.